Okay, so last time we uh, were finishing up convergent plate boundaries, right, or convergent tectonic settings would be a better way of saying that. Because remember, uh, the boundary is where a lot of this activity occurs, but you can still have convergence within the side of a plate. Like remember when we talked about crit, um, passive margins, we're still having the whole plate is both the oceanic crust and the continental crust, so you can still have some kind of convergence, but um, it's not technically a boundary right there at the continental edge. The actual edge of the, bo the boundary is out in the middle, middle of the ocean, right? So there's a difference between that. that there is a, the edge of the continent right here on the, off the coast of, of uh, what we call the, the shelf, in the continental shelf here. Um, so that would be continental crust here and then oceanic crust over here. But that's the edge of the, con the continent versus the, uh, the oceanic. But the actual plate, the actual tectonic plate, is that is all out in the middle of the ocean here. This is oceanic crust is part of it. The continental crust is part of it. The whole thing is moving to the to the uh, to the west. And so just remember that that's the difference here. Now, if we're convergent convergent boundary here, what we have is we have two continental crusts kind of moving towards each other, right? Okay, and this is that stuff that is more felsic. Okay, both both of them are more felsic, so that means they have a lower density. Um, both the crusts have lower density, and so what happens here is is that now the materials are so um, so have pretty much the same density, and they're not as dense as the material the mantle below. Um, so they don't actually go down. So instead, they actually kind of stack up on top of each other. Now, what usually happens is, is that they initially start off like this, but there might be a continent out here, right? And that continent keeps going, keeps going, and so that material dies away. So you might have leftover kind of crust down here that is, that is broken off from the, the rest of the material and is slowly sinking. Okay, and so there, there could be evidence of old volcanics, but because there is no activity with where you have uh, a change in the water, volatiles, um, you have increased temperature, but you don't have an increase of volatiles or of a decrease in pressure, so you have no volcanics here. So there's no volcanoes. However, uh, there are uh, lots of earthquakes here. And these earthquakes, once again, can be fairly large. And the, some of the largest ones can be anywhere from 8 to 7 to up to a 9, even magnitude. So, but uh, you can have anything from all the way from the uh, 2 and anything like that. These are just the larger quakes here. So, so, this, this, so all convergent boundaries have these larger earthquakes. That I told. So, uh, just remember that anywhere from 7 to a 9 can be our average really big earthquakes. Okay, so these ones form these big mound belts. So that when they, they do that, they can have lots of meta, metamorphism like we already kind of talked about. You have low grade metamorphism um, towards the surface and higher grade metamorphism down here. Uh, so that would be high grade and this is lower grade uh, metamorphism. So you can have lots of metamorphic rocks here. But you also have tons of folds as well. So this is, uh, there's lots of folds in these area. Um, anaclines and synclines, right, pairs, um, are very common in these areas. But also faults, uh, once again, these ones here, you have mostly these reverse or thrust faults um, at these localities. Very, very common at these localities. Because um, basically you're, this whole crust, this whole plate moving up on top of the other one is that it's just a large reverse, uh, sorry, thrust fault, really to form these really large mountain belts. So we so, so the sample, the best example that we have of this today is the Himalayas. Okay, now we could, have, we, what we have had have happened in the past, so if you want a past example, it's the Appalachians, right? Uh, would be a good example when we had North America and Africa slamming into each other. Uh, before, uh, with the Himalayas, it's uh, India, the Indian plate, actually slamming into the Asia plate um, to form the Himalayas. The past is that for the Appalachians was the North American plate and the African plate slamming into each other. That sense has been um, reversed and now we have a divergence here um, that kept going, kept going, and now we have a passive boundary, right? 
So, so that was a long time ago. That when that actually occurred here in the Appalachians, it actually occurred about 320 million uh, years ago. Okay, so that's pretty old, uh, pretty old uh, event that occurred there. So that's your continental continental here. Okay, so if you, we've kind of discussed the, the, the general things that happen at convergence. We generally have reverse faults and thrust faults. You can have other kinds of faults too, uh, but these are by far the, the most common ones. And we almost all of them are going to have folds in them. Almost all of them are going to have metamorphism in them. And you tend to have all these geological resources at each one of these. Now, on these two, you're actually, on these two up here, you're actually having oceanic crust being destroyed or seafloor be destroyed, okay, um, destroyed because it's going down and melting, so, so melting, occurring. so therefore volcanoes, right, whereas this last one, there is no, no sea floor is, uh, is being destroyed, so it's, no sea floor is being created either, uh, and so there is no volcanoes, right? And whereas up here, that's part of the main reason why there is volcanoes. Gotcha? So that's convergent plane boundaries. Okay, so let's, uh, now we've done convergent, let's go over here, let's do um, divergent now. So let's, uh, let's uh, go here and do divergence up here. Um, divergent plane boundaries. And once again, because there's two different types of uh, plates, there's going to be two different types of plate uh, divergent plane boundaries. There's going to be the first one here, which is going to be ocean um, oceanic divergence. Okay, and this is when uh, you have, let's say, a, that oceanic crust here, and you have mantle rising up underneath it. Um, so as it rises up, you have a decompression or drop in pressure. Um, but you still have uh, high temperatures, right? And this is why melt is occurring. Um, so you get, because of this, you get a melt. And as it does that, it pushes up on the crust. And so you have this crust that gets pushed up. Um, and then you have new material being formed, right? Okay, so this material is going this way. This material is going this way. You have both oceanic crust, so it's mafic in composition, right? And so you get this... You still get some differentiation, so you get some materials actually um, um, going from your ultramafic to your mafic materials, but you have mostly basalts and stuff like that along here. And because you have most of your basalts, what kind of volcanoes are you going to have along this area? Mostly shield volcanoes, right? Mostly the shield volcanoes is what's going to, you're going to you're form at these localities. So you have mostly uh, mafic um, magmas um, and shield volcanoes. Um, and shell volcanoes, right? So you're going to have earthquakes here still too, uh, but these earthquakes are going to be smaller. So the largest ones you're going to have here, you're going to have mostly um, anywhere from maybe a 6 uh, is, is, is your max, 6, maybe a 7 is your, is your large uh, largest earthquakes you're going to get. Okay, so now if you have a divergence, and this is the same case for all divergent boundaries, you're going to, I'm going to draw my blocks here again, Okay, but this time um, the foot wall okay, goes down, sorry, up relative to your hanging wall, right? Okay, so let's see if I can draw this in, in three dimensions again. Okay, I don't know if that worked. It doesn't look very good. Okay, uh, so. So that's your, your, your divergence. So this is what we call a normal fault. Okay. And you could get, uh, that's your brittle deformation. Okay. Mostly at shallow depths. Okay. Whereas deeper down, you're still going to get, um, still going to get your ductal deformation. At depth. Okay. This time you're going to maybe get domes, okay, because um, you're pushing up on the magma, so you end up with this dome, okay. So a good example of this is the East African Rift uh, Valley, where you have these big, the Ethiopian Dome, um, and your Kenyan Dome, 
uh, forming. And this is because of the magma that's rising up underneath. So the same kind of thing that's happening here is, is rising up to form to form that. Okay, so you can have you don't you tend to maybe have monoclines as well, okay, um, in these areas because you have one part of the plate getting pushed up, so you end up having a monocline on this side and maybe a monocline on this side, okay, as the magma is being pushed up. So you can get monoclines and some domes in the ductal deformation of this, but mostly these these normal faults. And you can still have metamorphism here, uh, but it's it's usually low grade. Because it's usually contact metamorphism. Okay? You can have contact metamorphism at convergent boundaries too, and I'm killing this with the, the, the metamorphism. If you remember, meta, contact meta is mostly from igneous activity. Okay? Coming and baking the outside material. Okay? Baking it. So it's mostly just due to temperature on this one, not as much pressure. So you can still get metamorphosis. So because of that, you can still get some geological resources. Um, you can still get gold and 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 uh, silver and stuff like that. Um, lots same things that you can get for the igneous activity here, uh, but but can happen a lot in the ocean, especially for lots of magnesium um, and even iron um, in these areas. Okay, so uh, a good example of an oceanic divergence here uh, would be the mid. Here's an example, uh, would be the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's a ridge. Um, and so that would be a good example of it. Uh, another one might be the Red Sea. Okay, it's, it's actually separated enough to actually, it's just the, just the sea at this point. Um, there's lots of other places, but those are some of the best, better examples here. Um, so, so those would that be what you call your oceanic divergence. Now, your continental divergence also has the same thing happening, but now you have continental crust that's actually being pushed up, right? And so you end up with these faults in the middle, okay, and even magma maybe coming up, so you can get so you still have this material coming up, forming these domes like we were talking about earlier, okay. So this is your continental crust here. Um, and starting to push it apart. So you end up getting these, this brittle deformation where you get these, um, these normal faults on both sides and these blocks coming down, okay, to actually form uh, a continental divide or kind of a ridge in a set. That's actually a good example of this um, is, uh, or continental divergence is the basin and range of uh, the U.S., uh, the East. East African Rift is the best example. Rift um, over in Africa, right? Um, so, so those are some good examples of those ones here. Once again, here it's this decrease of pressure that's occurring, that's causing the the melt, and the increase in temperature. Okay, so that's what's causing the melt. Once again, just like in um, any night, normal fault, and earthquakes are going to be smaller. They're going to be anywhere from six to seven magnitude. Those are the larger ones that you tend to have um, along continental divergent boundaries. Um, so, so those are some of the, the, the main things that you're going to get here. Once again, you're going to get mostly shield volcanoes, but because you're going through this this um, this materials, you're going to come up and form mafic material. But also because you're going through continental crest. You can also get some strato volcanoes, okay, on occasion, and cinder. So you get the whole gamut here. Um, Shell volcanoes are the more common, but you can get strato and or composite cones and um, and cinder. So uh, a good example of a composite cone that you can form in these areas is Mount Kilimanjaro in in Africa. But you get a lot of shear volcanoes and flood basalts and stuff in those regions as well. So, so those are some examples of, of those ones. Okay, uh, so that's your divergence. Fairly straightforward. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention for divergence in, in uh, oceanic ones and in continental ones here, really. So let's put this in the, the basic here. You tend to actually not only have normal faults, but sometimes transform faults, or better put as what we call strike slip faults. Okay, can also